Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today we will be talking about the Colfax Massacre of 1873. It was a very sad event and approximately 152 to 153 people lost their lives on that day. So, with that being said, let's chat. The Colfax Massacre took place on Easter Sunday, April 13, 1873. It started as a battle which turned to a war between blacks and whites in Colfax, Louisiana. Two or three whites were killed, and I say two or three because different reports give different numbers. Some reports say two and some reports say three. And an estimated 150 blacks lost their lives that day. The massacre resulted from racial tension following the hotly contested Louisiana governor's race of 1872. The Republicans barely won the contest and retained control of the state. And of course, this upset the Democrats. This upset the Democrats so much they vowed revenge on the Republicans. So to break that down or to elaborate a little further... The election was very close, and when the Democrats lost, they felt as if the Republicans cheated and they wanted revenge. Hmm. Now, this sounds very familiar and seems as if history is kind of repeating itself. As I recall, there was a similar situation with the Trump and Biden election, but the Republicans were the ones who felt cheated. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We remember how that went. But anyway, back to the story. Not only did the Democrats feel cheated, there was already great racial tension following the Civil War. And if you all check my videos, um, my other videos, you'll see um, how bad the racial tension was following the Civil War. So, of course, it was very bad in Louisiana as well. Now, the white Southerners, they were very bitter over the Confederacy and they were doing all they could to restrict the rights of the former slaves. At the same time, white supremacist groups, such as the Ku Klux Klan, they terrorized African Americans throughout the South, and they killed thousands of African Americans while trying to reinforce antebellum policies of white supremacy. Now, Colfax Parish, or county, and I will be using Colfax County throughout the video instead of Colfax Parish, because more people are familiar with the word county. But Colfax County, at that time, it reflected the political and racial divide in Louisiana. There were about 4,600 voters in 1872, well, in the 1872 election. And out of those 4,600 voters, 2,400 were mostly black Republican voters and 2,200 were white Democrat voters. And during all the political and racial tension, an incident occurred, and this incident is what caused the Colfax Massacre of 1873. On March the 28th, 1873, white Democratic leaders gathered their armed supporters and contrived the plan to take the Colfax County Courthouse from the black and white GOP officials or office holders. They planned to put their plan in action on April the 1st, 1873. And the Republicans, they were aware of the upcoming attack. They were aware of the attack because the white men announced their intentions to attack and made for, I'm sorry, and they made time for the non-combatants or the citizens not involved in the battle to safely evacuate. Many of the other citizens stayed to stand with the Republicans. They were ready for the attack on April 1st, but nothing happened on that day. The fight didn't erupt until the following day, April the 2nd. And the fight or the battle, it continued for several days. And on April the 13th, which was Easter Sunday, more than 300 white men, including members of the white supremacist organizations, such as the Ku Klux Klan and the Knights of the White Camellia, they attacked the courthouse. Now, for those who don't know, the Knights of the White Camellia were an an American political terrorist organization that operated in the South in the late 19th century. They are similar to and associated with the KKK or the Ku Klux Klan. 
They supported white supremacy and also opposed the rights of the freed men or former slaves. The group founder or the group's founder was, and I'm sorry, y'all, I'm going to butcher this name. If you all just see the spelling, his name is Alcabides de Blanc. Um, he was the founder of the group, the Knights of the White Camellia, and they're pretty much just like the KKK. But back to the story. When the 300 white men attacked the courthouse, hundreds of black men, women, and children attempted to defend the courthouse and fight back. But when the white men maneuvered a cannon to fire at the courthouse, many of the black defenders, they were forced to retreat inside the courthouse. Now, when they retreated inside, the white men set fire to the building. Some of the black people inside the courthouse, they tried to surrender, while others, they fired their weapons at the white men. And during all of this commotion, James West had not, he was, he was said to be the leader of the group, the Knights of the White Camellia. At this time, you know, during the battle, he was the one who was leading them. And during all of this commotion, he was accidentally shot and killed by one of his own men. And when he was shot and killed, the white men became so enraged by the killings, they began to relentlessly fire upon the crowd of black people who remained near the courthouse door. So some of the black people had ran inside of the courthouse to retreat from the cannon, but several were still left outside around the door. And those were the ones that got fired upon. And as they um, as they attempted to flee, the African-Americans. As they attempted to flee from the gunfire, the white men rode in pursuit after them and slaughtered them all. Now, remember when I said earlier that some of the black people ran inside the courthouse to escape the cannon that the white men um, had aimed at them? Well, the white men, after they set that um, courthouse on fire, a lot of the black people, they tried to escape or emerge from the building. And when they did try to escape or they emerged from the burning building, they were detained as prisoners. And um, after they have captured the prisoners later that evening, there was a dispute amongst the white men as to whether they would release the black prisoners. Now, while they were having this dispute. Members of the prisoners families began to gather around the courthouse. So this dispute was, you know, outside of the courthouse and the families. Now, remember earlier that we said that a lot of the citizens who didn't want to battle or didn't want to take place in the fight, they were allowed to evacuate. So a lot of them, you know, were coming back and they made it back to the courthouse and some of the other townspeople that didn't evacuate, probably hiding around the town and things of that nature, trying to stay safe. But the families of the prisoners, they started to surround the courthouse and surround the dispute that the white men were having as to what they were going to do with the prisoners. Now, as they began to, you know, gather and get a lot closer and see what was going on, the sons of James had not. Now, remember, James was the leader of the Knights of the White Camellia during this battle, and he was the one who was shot and killed by one of his own men. But his sons, along with several of the other white men, began to execute the prisoners while their families watched. They started to shoot them in the head execution style. One of the white participants to that particular execution estimated that they had shot 48 people. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Klan began to kill um, black people who were not at the courthouse or involved in the battle throughout the night. So they were very outraged about this man's death. And the people that they originally allowed to escape or evacuate throughout the night, they started to ride and kill them as well. And approximately 150 African-Americans were killed in total and two or three whites were killed. And remember why we say two or three, because the reports aren't sure they give different numbers. Now, by the grace of God, all of the prisoners that were shot because they shot many of them in the head execution style. But it appears that all of them weren't shot execution style. Or, you know, that maybe they were and they still survive. But from what it's saying is that. All of the prisoners did not die and a couple survived to where they were able to testify in court against the perpetrators. And speaking of court, let's talk a little bit about how the court 
proceedings and all of that actually went in this case. So shortly after the massacre, um, like I said, 150 African Americans were killed and two or three white people were well, white men were killed as well. And shortly after that massacre, the state officials came in and they recorded the scene and they investigated. Now, they acted under the control of Republican Governor William Kellogg, one of his associated with the serial probably is anyway. They assisted with burying 59 of the bodies, but Lord only knows what really happened um, or what they really did with the bodies. The reason why I say that is because we know at that time it wasn't uncommon to put bodies in mass graves. And let's just be honest. I mean, the math just ain't math in here. If they buried 59 bodies and there was 150 black people killed as well as two or three white people, ki- white men killed. That will leave about 152 to 153 bodies total. So if only 59 got buried, what happened to the rest of them? So, like I said, call me crazy. But um, my mind immediately goes to mass graves when it comes to something like that. And it, like I said, it wasn't uncommon at this particular period in time. Okay, but back to the story. New Orleans police and federal troops arrived days after the massacre to restore the order within the town. 97 white men were arrested and charged. It was James Beckwith. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. Beckwith, who prepared the indictment and commissioned federal marshals to arrest the suspected organizers of the white side under the Enforcement Acts of 1870 and 1871. These acts created a special code of federal criminal offenses to fight clan violence. Basically, it was an act to fight violence of organizations such as the KKK and the Knights of the White Camellia. Now, the Enforcement Acts are also known as the Ku Klux Klan Act. 97 men were arrested and charged, but only a handful was convicted. When I say a handful, I mean only three. Uno, dos, tres. Tres. Only three men were convicted out of the 97 arrested and charged. And those three men, they were eventually released in 1875 when the U.S. Supreme Court in the trial of the United States versus Krusank, Krushank, I'm sorry, which was the name of the case. The case was originally named United States versus Columbus Nash, but later renamed because the leader, the lead defendant remained at large or in other words, he was still on the run. Now, as I said, the Supreme Court, they ruled the Enforcement Act as unconstitutional and the men were released. So 150 people massacred. And 152 to 153 people lost their lives overall and no justice was served. No justice was served in this case and many others because Southern courts and elected officials increasingly favored white supremacy and turned a blind eye to the Klan style violence and repression. I mean, this time they just pretty much didn't care. And it's getting pretty bad nowadays as well. But let's keep on going. And of course, um, just to think about how this turned out, it's a very, very sad and unfortunate situation that so many people lost their lives. And there are several other events that we will talk about in the future that are similar to this particular event. So we're going to get there. But until we do and until next time. I want you all to please tell me what you all think about this video in the comments below. If you have any additional information, drop it down there as well. Please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, Support if you can. No pressure. The information to support will be in the description below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.